<laughs> so wait on two real ones. All right, thanks, AC. We'll go ahead and get started here with Mike Bresnahan. Hey, Alex. Uh, I want to talk about your defense a little bit. A lot of people are, are recognizing it uh, on Twitter and so on and so forth. How would you assess how you played against uh, Damian? Uh, obviously, he's still going to get his points, but you probably be pretty pleased with your defensive effort and the team as a whole. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I obviously, I mean, even if I wanted to, I can't take credit for myself. Uh, Damian Lillard's easily the hottest player in the bubble, maybe outside Devin Booker, but in the playoffs for sure. Um, and just overall, one of the best point guards in the league, um, if not up there for the best. So I mean, obviously you have to be prepared to, to play defense with five guys against him. Uh, just coming off screens, making sure the bigs are up, making sure there's constant pressure on him, just trying to give him different looks. Because if he gets comfortable, everybody knows what he's capable of. Alex, kind of a, a quiet first half for AD. He made only one shot, uh, missed a bunch of free throws, but he really came alive in that second half. What did you see from him, especially in that fourth quarter, drilling those uh, long jumpers on three consecutive possessions? Yeah, he was a little frustrated. I could see uh, after he missed those free throws early. Um, so he kind of he kind of just used that frustration to fuel him going into the second half. Uh, tried to just take advantage of their pick and the pick and roll and get him the ball with the elbow. And I mean, when, when he's making jump shots, he's impossible to guard. I'd ask about LeBron as well, of course. I mean, he came out with kind of a score first mindset in the first half, and then in the second half, a little bit of everything, including some threes. Uh, he was kind of quiet, I guess, for his from his perspective in game two with only ten points. Uh, that was not the case tonight, was it? Yeah, no, I mean, he, you know, we, we're playing games that matter, and this is the first time really since the first couple games in the bubble where, where we're having our sense of urgency and our, and our preparation and our mentality of, of playing like how we played all year. So uh, he's, he's obviously in a groove now, uh, starting to shoot the ball really well. Once, once him and AD start making shots like that tonight, we're, we're a tough out. All right, Harrison, go ahead. All right, Harrison, are you there? All right, we'll see anyone on site. Yep. Yes, come out. Yeah. Um, AC, can you describe the play in the fourth quarter where you close out and Dame and then to the other side to see you, um, you know what? It's transition. It was a transition play. And you come closing to CJ's chest and he dribbled in for like a floater or something? Yeah, well, it, it seemed like you moved side to side on, on the court. Um, yeah, man, I'm just... You know, that's kind of how I play. Uh, I had a long closeout in either game one or game two to get a contest in the corner. Uh, you know, it's it's time to leave it all out of the court. You know, if I see an opening, I'm going to go cover it up. Um, and, and that's just kind of the culture of our team. You know, whenever there's a play to be made, whoever's there to make it makes it. So sometimes it's me, sometimes it's AD covered on the backside, uh, KCP, DG, Kuz. Kuz has done a great job in the series, too, of, of just playing with great effort. Uh, it's, it's just my time a lot of times because I, I recognize it. Uh, but but yeah, it's just me playing hard, you know, nothing to save. Oh, you guys have had, um, uh, you know, some start, some slow starts offensively. When you put forward, sort of, when you get some of those individual efforts on defense, how does that affect the bench? How does that affect the team effort level? You know, that's that's kind of been our thing all year. Um, whether we've we've shot the ball well or not, um, you know, we've 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 struggled to get going, obviously, offensively a couple times in the bubble, but. Uh, just, just locking in on defense and locking into our game plan. You know, we kind of had a slow start in game one, and they we let them extend their lead to double digits and, and kind of get out of hand. Then we were playing from behind, so we did a good job tonight of not letting that happen. After they hit a couple of threes early, we didn't um, just just staying locked in. You know, 48 minutes is such a long time. And there's so many possessions in a game. That's why even when there's a minute left and we're up 12 or 13, I'm still picking up full and making sure that we're working the defense uh, or working the offense to make sure that we, we get them to take the shot we want. And just lastly, um, you had seven assists tonight. You, you and AD had some, some good second half stretches where you guys increased the lead even while LeBron was on the bench. What was going well in those stints from your perspective? AD made some shots uh, for the most part. You know, I we just ran a simple high ball screen uh, and we, we did a good job of manipulating the defense. And then I just got it to him on time on target and he did the rest to be honest. How do you feel about sort of your role as that ball handler in, in the playoffs so far? I feel good. You know, that's, that's stuff I've done my whole life. Uh, come off pick and roll and read the defense and hit the big. Uh, uh, a lot of times it's in the pocket on the roll or hitting the guy on the backside. And then we just tried to ISO AD because he kind of got it going. So uh, 
uh, I feel I feel pretty comfortable doing that, playing off the ball. I'm just, I'm just a basketball player, so I, I kind of do it whenever I need to. All right, we'll do last two questions here, AC. Oh, we got Ed, Mike. <laughs> yeah, Alex, uh, seven assists tonight. I know you were just kind of talking about it. Uh, this is the second most you've had all season. Uh, what, what's, do you pride yourself on that type of thing? Obviously, a lot of people give you credit for defense, but when you get 10 points and seven assists, you can't always forget about your offense either. Yeah, you know, uh, I haven't shot the ball well in the bubble. Uh, it's been pretty frustrating, but, you know, I kind of didn't shoot the ball well to start the year this past year, and then uh, and they kind of got a little hotter towards the middle of the season. So I'm just I'm just sticking with my routine, man, just staying with my work, staying diligent, getting the shots up, being, being confident, still taking the shots like I would. If I made five in a row, missed five in a row. Um, and then the assists, you know, a lot of credit to AD, he made the shots, but me and him are just, when we get it going and we got ball movement like that, he's playing off me, I'm playing off him. Uh, it's really hard to guard. Have you talked to Rondo? Looked like he was kind of struggling with that back injury on the sideline. It flared up right before the game. He was kind of a late scratch. Have you had a chance to talk to him? What would he mean to that second unit when he does get back out there, whenever that is? Yeah, the stuff you saw me and AD do, I mean, he, he did that with him for years in New Orleans. Uh, he's done that for years in his whole career. He's one of the best pick and roll players to ever play the game as far as delivering and seeing the court and doing that. Uh, I'm obviously a shell of the talent that Rondo has, but uh, I, I do my best and, and, and it's pretty good at times to just get the ball where it needs to go. Um, and playing with him has helped me a lot this year. All right, thank you, Alex. Thanks, guys.